Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jim Ryan, and I'm the president of the University of Virginia. Um, this is a sad, shocking, and tragic day for our UVA community. I will describe um, briefly what we know at this point and then turn things over to uh, Chief Longo. But before I do that, let me say how deeply, I, how deeply sorry I am for the victims and for their family uh, and friends. Um, so in terms of what we know, as I mentioned in an email we sent out early this morning, uh, last night at approximately 10.30 p.m., university police responded to a call of shots fired in the Culbreth parking garage area. The suspected shooter is UVA student Christopher Darnell Jones, Jr. Upon arrival at the scene, university police encountered several victims of gunshot wounds. The shootings occurred on a bus full of students returning from a field trip. Three of the victims did not survive. They were Devin Chandler, a second year from Virginia Beach, Virginia, Lavelle Davis, a third year student from Ridgeville, South Carolina, and Deshaun Perry, a fourth year student from Miami, Florida. All three were members of the football team. Two other students were wounded and are being treated for injuries at the UVA Medical Center. One is in good condition, one is in critical condition. In order to protect their privacy, we are not releasing their names at this moment. The families of all the victims have been notified and the university is providing any and every available assistance. I have spoken with four of the families and I spoke directly to the student who is in good condition. Law enforcement, including university police, local law enforcement agencies, and Virginia State Police, continue their search for the suspect and will not stop until he is found. They have, however, lifted the shelter-in-place order following an exhaustive building-by-building -building search of grounds and are confident that the suspect has left the area. Classes and all extracurricular activities have been canceled for today, including the men's basketball game scheduled for this evening. Although we do not yet have a full understanding of the motive and circumstances surrounding these events, police are investigating as we speak. We will continue to keep the community notified of developments via our emergency alert system and further community-wide emails. I'm grateful to law enforcement for their response and to our community for facilitating their work with what I realize has been a long shelter-in-place order. This is an unimaginably sad day for our community. The entire university community is grieving this morning. My heart is broken for the victims and their families and for all who, those who knew and loved them. And they are all in my prayers. As I've said before, when I see our students, I see my own kids. And I cannot imagine anything worse for a parent than to lose a child. Please know we will do everything we can to honor their lives and will come together soon as a community to mourn these losses. In the meantime, if you need help, especially our students, please don't hesitate to reach out to the resources listed in the email I sent early this morning. And please reach out to each other and lend each other an ear and a shoulder, even if virtually. This is an extraordinarily difficult day for our community and we need to comfort and support each other and those closest to the victims of this horrendous shooting. Thank you, and now I'd like to turn it over to Chief Longo. Thank you, President Ryan. Um, thank all of you for, for assembling in here this afternoon and giving us the opportunity to tell what happened over the last several hours and perhaps even answer some of your questions. I'll, I'll say from the very beginning, there will be questions that will have no answers. And it's not because I don't want to tell you, it's because we just don't know. So I hope you'll be patient with that and trust that when we do know, you'll know. This has been an incredibly long evening, very tragic circumstances for our university community, for the city of Charlottesville, the county of Albemarle, the Commonwealth. It's especially tragic for um, a small number of families who we've had to break some really bad news to. And um, some of you tried to reach out through, throughout the evening, and we didn't take your calls. I apologize for that. One or more of you might even got hung up on in the midst of, of chaos, and so I apologize for that as well. Uh, when this call came out just after 10 o'clock last night, about 10.16,
and we knew the circumstances, we immediately initiated an, emer an emergency alert. Everyone with a UVA email address and a cell phone number that we have access to gets that alert, and that alert is sent out by our Office of Emergency Management. It's updated every 15 minutes, which is much, as much information as we can provide. And since 1016 up until just about 30 minutes ago, our students were sheltered where they were, and more than 500 of them were sheltered in buildings throughout grounds, studying in libraries, classrooms, and other places. Um, and they've cooperated with the directive that they received, and we're very grateful for that as well. And uh, fortunately, we've been able to lift that alert. As President Ryan mentioned, we, uh, thanks to the partnership of our city of Charlottesville partners, County of Albemarle, the Virginia State Police, our federal partners, the ATF, the FBI, the U.S. Marshal Service, a host of law enforcement officers who came to us to help secure a scene, search for evidence, process that scene for evidence, and now secure our grounds while we did the exhaustive search to the very best of our abilities. We're reasonably confident that the person responsible for this tragedy is not on our grounds. But make no mistake about it, we will find him wherever he is and bring the resources of every federal law enforcement agency in this nation who has the capacity and the ability to look for him beyond our boundaries. And if he's in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the people that are standing behind me will engage in that search as well. The bodies of Devin and Deshaun, as President Ryan indicated, were found inside a charter bus where they had been for the day enjoying a school activity, having a meal together, and coming back to our grounds. And someone amongst them chose to do an act of violence. And we found them dead inside that bus. And for hours, we had to process a crime scene. And I know I don't have to tell you how difficult that is for a family to not know, to see email chatter and social media. And well, we did our best to try to keep up with that, to let people know what we knew and, and what we were trying to do. And hopefully now that we've caught up, we'll be able to continue to share that message to the many families across this world that have young people here at our university to let them know that, that their, their young people are okay and that there will be people here for many days to take care of them. This strong law enforcement presence that you've probably seen on our grounds for the last several hours, represented by the agencies behind me, will stay here uh, until we're reasonably comfortable that, that um, this person is in custody. Well, in addition to our local, state, and federal partners, but the talents and the skills of our colleagues in the medical center um, who have been with us throughout this journey and will remain with us for the two students that we have there uh, seeking treatment. We deeply appreciate um, their efforts as well. We've secured uh, arrest warrants for uh, Mr. Jones. We've charged him with three counts of second-degree murder and we charged him with three counts of using a handgun in the commission of a felony. Those facts and circumstances were reviewed by a judicial officer, and those are the charges that were proffered. There comes a point in time that those charges need to be amended, and certain facts and circumstances arise that will cause us to do that. We'll do that. But we'll do that through the advice and counsel of, uh, of our uh, Commonwealth's attorney, and to the extent federal law applies, uh, the Office of the United States Attorney for the Western District, Mr. Cavanaugh, is present here today. I want to give you a description of, uh, of Mr. Jones. He is described as a black male. He was born on November the 19th, 1999. When he was last seen on our grounds, he was wearing a burgundy jacket, blue jeans, and red shoes. We believe he's driving a black SUV, Virginia Red. T is in tango, W is in whiskey, X is in x-ray, 3580. TWX, 3580. We implore anyone who's on our highways and byways who should see that vehicle bearing that tag to call 911 immediately and report his whereabouts, try to keep that vehicle in sight. Uh, we believe um, perhaps that Mr. Jones remains armed and he's to be considered dangerous and treated accordingly. 
I want to share some information with you because um, I want to be transparent with you. I want you to know what, what I know to the extent that I can share that information this afternoon. Mr. Jones came to the attention of the University of Virginia's threat assessment team in the fall of 2022. In fact, in September of 2022, our Office of Student Affairs reported to the multidisciplinary threat assessment team that Mr. Jones, they received information that Mr. Jones had made a comment about possessing a gun to a person that was unaffiliated with the university. In other words, a third party. That reporting person, again, unaffiliated with the university, to the best of our knowledge, never saw the gun. The comment about Mr. Jones owning a gun was not made in conjunction with any threats. The Office of Student Affairs followed up with the reporting person and made efforts to contact Mr. Jones. In fact, they followed up with Mr. Jones' roommate who did not report seeing the presence of a weapon. Pardon me. Thank you, Captain. We just received information the suspect is in custody. Just need a moment to thank God. <laughs> Grievous sigh of relief. Mr. Jones uh, also had come to the attention of our threat assessment team because he was involved in a, a hazing investigation of some sort. I don't know the facts and circumstances of that investigation. I know that uh, it was eventually closed uh, due to uh, witnesses that would not cooperate with the process. But through the course of the threat assessment team's investigation, we learned of a prior criminal incident involving a concealed weapon violation that occurred outside the city of Charlottesville in February of 2021. What's interesting about that case is he's, he's required as a student at the University of Virginia to report that, and he never did. And so the university has taken appropriate administrative charges through the university's Judiciary Council, and that matter is still pending adjudication. I thought it important to share that information with you to let you know that um, he had been called to our attention and to answer any questions you might have about that. I want you to hear that. I want you to hear that from me, not hear it from someone else. So I'll stop there, and uh, we'll take any questions that um, you might have. I'll call him out. We have time for a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Chief, Chief or President, President um, can, you can you discuss, discuss – what, what where, the, where the field was going, going the affiliation of, of people, people that were on that, on that bus and on that, on that trip, trip uh, and, 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 and the if the suspect part of that, part of that trip was on the front of the bus. Thank you. Thank you for the question. The information we have at this time is that the field trip was associated with a class, and the um, individuals that have been named were part of that trip um, to see a play. That is to see a play associated with the class. So it was a class field trip. Was the suspect in that, in that class or do we know? I do not have do those know. details. Do you, know, do you know what class it was? I do not. Do not. I'm sorry? Do you know I do not. We're, we're, we're seeking out all of the, that information. As you can imagine, the students are quite traumatized by the tragic events. Was the play in Washington, D.C.? I do not have the exact location. We are finalizing all of that. So, it, so the, the play was in Washington, D.C. Yeah. I have not been shared that information yet, and uh, it, it will come a point in time when, when we will share that information, I'm sure, but now is not the most appropriate time. Um, 
We're not releasing information about the patients who are still in the hospital at this time. Sorry, Mary, back up. Yeah, it's just, you, you mentioned the previous is in the previous policy that Did your office ever make contact or the student assessment office ever make contact with Jones prior to this? I can't speak for student affairs. Uh, the University Police Department had no contact him with this. The University Police Department is one of many people that's on that multidisciplinary threat assessment team, and we provide some of the background uh, with respect to individuals to come before that team. But to my knowledge, we did not have any contact with Mr. Jones with regard to that incident. Uh, my understanding is ballpark about 25. don't know how he he got away or how it was that he fled the scene and I don't have information with respect to how he was apprehended you can share about what preceded what led to the shooting have the other folks on the bus been interviewed we're in the process of doing that now so no no details you can share at this time about how the whether there's a conflict or yeah not at this time but do we know <laughs> when and where did the third victim Third victim was transported to the, the medical center and died there. Do we know Mr. Jones's status? At one point, he was on the football team. He's a, he was still a student here as of this morning. Was he still affiliated with the football team? Um, he was still a student, but to my knowledge, he was no longer on the football team and hadn't been uh, on the team for over a year. Um, the two other victims were students. I don't know to what extent they had a relationship with him. I, I don't know that for sure. You personally have been involved with so many tragedies that have happened here in Charleston. If you could just talk, I don't know if you've been able to process those feelings at all, what this community has been through the past decade or so and how this impacts all of you. I, I don't know that I've really had time to process that uh, to the extent that you speak of. I can tell you that the people stand behind that are standing behind me now, it, it speaks for itself how we get through these things. Um, these, uh, these agencies that are represented here were, were on these grounds very quickly. I'll try to do better next time. That's all I have for right now. We we can't do this alone, and we obviously haven't. And we found on campus, off campus at least, or, or where he was in custody. He was brought into custody. Well, I can tell you to the best of my knowledge, he was not found on campus. I cannot tell you where he was located or uh, where he was taken into custody or where he's located now. Did they police take him into custody? 